The previous video introduced charge, current, and voltage. It also introduced the equation for electrical power. If you're not familiar with those, you should watch the previous video. In this video, we will continue with resistance in Ohm's Law. Now, back during the time when people were first figuring things out about electricity, this was during the time period when it was still commonplace to become famous for coming up with a three-variable equation. A person named Georg Ohm discovered while experimenting with thermocouples, these are devices in which two dissimilar metals are placed in contact with each other, producing an electric potential. This incidentally is why you experience discomfort if you have fillings and accidentally bite on a piece of aluminum foil. The dissimilar metals produce an electric potential and your nerves become unhappy. Anyway, he experimented with thermocouples, varying the type and dimensions of the conductors he connected to them. And he discovered there was a linear relationship between the electric potential and the current. That is, the ratio of voltage to current was equal to some fixed quantity. This is the quantity we call resistance. In honor of Mr. Ohm, the unit of resistance was named after him. Ohm is symbolized by the Greek capital letter, Omega. In base SI units, the ohm is kilogram meters squared divided by amps squared times seconds cubed. Not that that will help you very much at this point, but I thought I'd throw it in there anyway. Now, finding a linear relationship between voltage and current was a great discovery, though it seems commonplace now. It was a huge step in the demystification of electricity. And since electricity is invisible, that is kind of a big deal. Today, resistors are common components in electronics, and they are used in almost every circuit. They also are the component we start with when we start learning about circuit modeling, as we are now. When we want to represent a resistor on paper, we use a zigzaggy line. So Ohm's law expressed pictorially would look like this. And we would represent the relationship between the voltage and the current as V of T equals R times I of T. If we wanted to take a look at this with numbers, we might start with a 100 ohm resistor. Adding a 1 volt DC source, DC stands for direct current, which simply means that the source always provides 1 volt. We can rearrange Ohm's law to solve for current. Substituting the values of 1 volt and 100 ohms, we arrive at a current of 0.01 amps, which could also be written as 10 milliamps. This brings up at least two further issues that I'll have to talk about. The first is, how did I choose what direction to draw the current? And the second is, what is this prefix milli? So some of you may already be familiar with this one. Let's start with the direction of the current. In the first video, I told you that charge comes in positive and negative varieties. The, the decision to assign positive and negative was largely arbitrary. Again, thanks, Ben Franklin. As long as everyone agrees how to use the positive and negative, the system worked. Though there is a physical argument for the direction of the current, I'm going to appeal to something called the passive sign convention. As the name implies, this is the convention. Everyone everywhere agrees to this convention, and that allows us to communicate about circuits effectively. The passive sign convention defines the relationship between the polarity, that is the positive and negative, or direction of a voltage, and the direction of the current associated with that voltage. Now, voltage is a difference in electric potential between two points. The positive sign is assigned to the more positive potential energy. The voltage source in this circuit supplies power. As the current travels through the circuit, it encounters a resistor. A resistor is an element that uses energy or dissipates power. Usually, the electrical energy is converted to thermal energy or heat in the resistor. Though in extreme cases, we can get light out for a brief amount of time. That being said, electrical energy will be lost in the resistor. So we will go from a higher electric potential to a lower electric potential as we cross the resistor. So according to the passive sign convention, since the resistor dissipates power, the current enters the terminal associated with the positive sign of the voltage and leaves the terminal associated with the negative sign of the voltage. So when current enters a positive terminal of a device that uses energy, that device dissipate or absorbs positive power. From our power equation in the last video, power is equal to voltage times current. The power dissipated by the resistor is one volt 
times 0 0.01 amps or a positive 0.1 watts. So to summarize the passive sign convention, it can be stated for any circuit element that uses power, current flows from the positive terminal of the voltage to the negative terminal. In this case, the element will absorb positive power. Conversely, if the, an element is supplying power, current will flow from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. In this case, the element is absorbing negative power, which is a more complicated way of saying that it is supplying power. All right, now back to the milli prefix. In the last video, we covered the SI units, with units being the meter, kilogram, second, ampere, kelvin, mole, and candela. Along with units, we have prefixes that help us to communicate. In engineering, we use a subset of SI prefixes, and we only use prefixes associated with factors of 1000. The engineering prefixes are summarized in this table. Most commonly, we use prefixes of giga down to pico, which is 10 to the positive 9 down to 10 to the negative 12. Although in computing tera, for instance, for 10 to the positive 12 is becoming fairly common. Now, as it applies to the example earlier, 0 0.01 amps written in scientific notation would be 10 times 10 to the negative 3 amps. The prefix that is used for 10 to the negative 3 is milli, so this can be written as 10 milliamps. Some common ranges for quantities used in this series on electrical engineering would be voltages will generally fall into the micro to kilovolt range. Currents will usually be from microamp to the amp range. Common resistances will go from the ohm up to the mega ohm range. Inductances, we'll talk about these later, will generally be in the millihenry to microhenry range. And capacitors will generally be in the microfarad range down to the picofarad range. So in today's video, I introduced the concept of resistance. We learned about Ohm's law, the passive sign convention, and briefly covered engineering prefixes. So until next time, go out and make it a great one.